And welcome back to KTN Weekend Prime, where you get the whole story on the KTN News, a point of news. This evening, we are discussing something that, um, like I said, should should be part of the national discourse in almost every, at almost every table and almost every forum. Economic and social rights in this country, <coughs> beg your pardon, are something that perhaps take a back burner when it comes to uh, the discussions, the forums that we've had in Kenya, political rights um, um, possession, possessing pride of place, but there are quite a number of things that we need to be talking about with respect to the development of this country and perhaps um, anchoring or pegging this discussion f quite nicely is um, the, the teacher strike um, that, that's been going on for the past four weeks. We'll, see, we'll lead off of that, but first let me introduce my guest uh, this evening, not a new face to KTN or to the country, Hassan Omar, Senator for Mombasa. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you, John. And right yeah. at the end there, we've got environmentalist and winner of the Goldman Prize 2020. <laughs> 12 Ikal Angele Asante Sana. Thank you very much for joining us, Ikal. Um, I'll start. I know the rule should be ladies first, but I want to start with uh, with uh, Senator Omar because you've got an interesting bill. I, I got a chance to look at it. Uh, the bill on the preservation of dignity and enforcement of social and economic rights. It's a mouthful, but it sort of encapsulates what we want to talk about today. Tell us a little bit about what the bill is supposed to do. Uh, the bill tries to translate some of the very broad aspirations or pronouncements of the Constitution into law, into law and a program upon which this law can be enacted. It tries to, to join the spirit upon what the Constitution provided, Article 19, mm -hmm. the preservation of human dignity, Article 43, which then provides the, the, ki the kinds of issues that we're talking about, right to food, so, uh, social security, education, health care, uh, uh, water and sanitation, uh, and then ties it also to to Article 174, which is part of the socio-economic development that ca and under the objects of devolution, mm -hmm. and then puts it under ties it to Article 21 too, which it provides that the state shall provide you know legislative policy and other measures to ensure the enforcement of these rights. Yeah. So for for me, the bill is simply trying to give a a, 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 a program uh, where county governments shall demonstrate how they are trying to progressively realize these uh, socioeconomic rights mm -hmm. uh, within, within the context of the accountants. These are fu most of the socioeconomic rights articulated in Article 43 are actually functions of the county government. They're now under, part of the divorce. Under, 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 under uh, the the part two, the fourth schedule, which yeah. outlines the functions of county governments. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do in Kenya, when things are remain in, in the constitution as broad aspirations, they are hardly binding. So we're looking for an enforcement regime. In fact, very few countries have tried to put it together an enforcement regime. They, they, and this, this enforcement regime is not only for countries that are wealthy. This is about you do, do dealing with the inequalities in Kenya, yeah. issues of social justice that we have. So we, there must be demonstrable policy or legislative actions that are being taken by county governments and national government to mitigate their inequalities, to mitigate the, the lack of access to some of these basic amenities. All, all right, let's, let's use a, a recent news event. Like I mentioned, the teacher strike. Four weeks into the teacher strike, mm -hmm. there was quite a bit of an impasse uh, between the government and uh, the, the teachers. How do you think a law like this would have helped resolve some of those issues or clarify it, some of those it issues? It, it sets the obligations. It, it talks about you know, what kind of uh, investment governments need to make progressively in education. Mm -hmm. you, you, you need to demonstrate that it is the right that you have secured and guaranteed within the spheres of, uh, of your, your, your government policy. Mm -hmm. It will have come in from the very conception of the budgeting, the, from the budget policy statements to, 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 to the national budget estimates. It, you, you, in terms of the architecture of public finance, you introduce this, this issue of economic and social rights, including the right to education. Mm -hmm. Therefore, government must demonstrate how progressively it is trying to achieve these rights articulated in the Constitution and the MDGs. And it being a right, therefore, means yeah. that and it, and, and the education we're talking about is quality education. To quality education means you must not inv only invest in pe giving people laptops or what are they called, tablets. You must you invest, you must in, invest in, well. in human resource capacity so mm -hmm. that teachers are motivated, so that the standards of education then can appear to, 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 go, to, to have an upward trajectory. Yeah. What we see today is private schools are doing far better. 
meaning that there, is, there isn't sufficient uh, you know, development or investment in human capital. There isn't sufficient development, uh, investment in human resource. And you, you cannot p p p pretend that you want to develop a country without sufficient investment in its human resource. All right, Ikal, let's bring you in. You've been part of a, a larger fight, a transnational fight between uh, perhaps the residents of Turkana and especially the residents al around Lake Turkana and uh, the Ethiopian government with the development of the Gebe project. Um, how would a law like this have helped resolve that? I mean, it's just a corollary to the, the question I asked uh, Hassan. Um, how would a law like this have helped? Or perhaps a question should be, did you feel a gap in the laws that we currently have when you were trying to pursue this um, legally? I think one of the, the problems that we went through was how do you engage government? Because all, all this, when, when uh, development is said to be in the best interest of the country, when it actually, it, it, it in many ways, victimizes the people within where the resources are, is, is where we, f we feel there's a gap. And it's generally overall where the communities where resources are found are seen to be beneficiaries. So it's like the economic and social rights are not met by the government, but then uh, the corporations come and give them as, as corporate social responsibility. So yeah. when when you you don't have education, you don't have healthcare, and then the corporations or the development that is seen to be in the better in betterment of the country mm -hmm. is that is what is then uh, sort of traded off for 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 such communities. So we felt that there was no space for us to argue this because in many times, many a times the, the argument was it's in the best interest of the country. Well, the government would argue, at least that the, there would be an argument for the government in saying that perhaps they do not have the economic capacity and, and it's in the constitution that they don't have the economic uh, capacity to be able to um, give these rights uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the people of Turkana, to the people of different parts of the country. Um, how then do you do you use do you use the arguments that you've been given to to counter that? If if it's within the constitution and it's a right of the government to say, hey, we just don't have the money to do this, then how do you how do you turn this around? I think the argument, you know, the constant argument that we don't have the money to is is wh where we start. When we start with the narrative of saying we don't have the money, then yet there's money to do other things. Mm -hmm. Why don't we look at our priorities? So we start to look at the economic and social rights of these communities as it's sort of like it's not it does not bring an it's not an economic argument mm -hmm. and that's where we we start from so it is easier to sort issues that are seen to bring the economic benefits yet the the economic and social rights the benefits to such communities does not need to have a financial benefit or economic achievement for the country Turkana county is one of the richest counties in by in terms of um, of its mineral wealth and its natural resource wealth do you think that the county government there um, as well as the national government, have the people's interest as a primary consideration, their economic and social um, interest as a primary consideration, or the greater good of the of the Kenyan public with being able to to uh, to to pump oil out of there, or wind energy, or the many other things that are happening from there. Whose interest do you think Trump whose? Or should supersede whose? I think the one the drive for Kenya to achieve economic growth. To, a, to, to achieve m further economic growth, to be a middle-income country, it se seems to be superseding anything else. So the rights of the people, the analysis that the land is actually actually a livelihood to the communities um, is, is pushed aside and it is seen that the resource is more important. So we are trying to achieve economic growth, be a middle-income country, and so that trade-off. And communities are told, well, this will come back and support you, but without the achievement. So the argument is, you, if you look at the, the newspapers, the, they will say the number of jobs that have been given, the number of contracts that have been, uh, the amount of money that Talo and other companies are, are spending in this mm -hmm. area, as if it is a token. Yeah. Yet what Talo is benefiting out of that land, that resource, is much more. So I think the argument should really change. And so in our, in our perception, the interests of the communities are not primary, and it is the need to pump out the oil by 2022 or before that comes first. Did you get a look at the oil contracts that we have and, and be able to analyze whether this was a consideration at, at any level? Because um, in circles, in, 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 in oil circles, if I, if I can call them that, um, Kenya, the, the, the people who talk within these circles say that Kenya does fairly well in terms of the consideration of the rights of the people on the ground. Um, look, looking at the contracts, so one, getting the contracts is a problem. So you'll get piecemeal of, of the contracts. That becomes, so you're basically piecing issues to, to be able to look at what, what, whose interests are taken care of. But 
um, looking at the petroleum uh, legislation that is still a bill, yeah. um, you can see some improvement. However, the space for community engagement is lacking. A lot yeah. of power still is in central government. Counties do not have so much representation yeah. in, in any of the frameworks. That means the, the cabinet secretary of energy holds a lot of power. A lot of power is within central government, which then denies county governments the space yeah. to engage and really represent the people. Okay, um, John, I want to say something. Yeah. You're, uh, you're saying Kenya is doing well mm -hmm. because of people like a car. Trust me, they, you know there's, there's EITI, Extractive Industry Transparency Initiatives, mm -hmm. lately, that it require states to involve the, the whole litany of stakeholders, including civil society and residents. And these are the things that have constantly you know, uh, improved the, the, or evolved the, our extractive industry, you know, transparency uh, model. model, model. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's partly, largely because of Kenyans pushing for these issues. Uh, we see all these contracts that were entered in the yesteryear, as well, which are of a total detriment to the Kenyan people. Well, I, I think also just revisiting the issue of ECOSOC, it, it is not, the ec in terms of the enforcement regime of economic social rights, it does, it, it does not depend on the wealth of a nation. Yeah. It depends, it, nations must demonstrate, no matter how wealthy or poor they are, mm -hmm. what programs they have put into place. Kenyans, in fact, can go to court, and it is, it, the, 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 the burden of responsibility is on the government to demonstrate what it has done in, to put into place measures to, to mitigate some, the, 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 the adherence or the obligations under this Article 43. Secondly, I must say this, almost all governors have totally missed the, the narrative of for devolution. Yeah. Devolution was about economic social development, it was about bringing service delivery, it was about accountable uh, and democratic government that is near to the people. Governors think that they, they, they want these mega projects, they want to mirror the national government. Mm -hmm. So they, they miss the plot in devolution because, and some of them are doing social justice work with politicization. You know, we, in social justice work, you need to depoliticize policy. Mm -hmm. So governors today are, are launching boreholes in, in uh, 50 years on and think they're doing a great thing. In fact, we sh should be ashamed of, uh, of ourselves as a country, launching boreholes mm -hmm. where we ha used to have pipe water. Like, I come from a place called Old Town. When I was growing up, we used to have pipe water in Old Town, Kibokoni. Uh, it, it was flowing, like, you know, you could drink from the taps. Uh, lately, you know, you go around launching boreholes and think you, 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 you're, doing pro you're making progress. I think yeah. we've moved backward. So I think what happens, we need to depoliticize policy, we need to have a framework. And that's why this framework provides a, uh, a mandatory uh, socio-economic uh, you know, plan integrated in the county, in, 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 in county integrated development plan, yeah. where then there will be a robust citizen participation so that citizens can be able to, to prioritize. Uh, you know, I, I, I just kept joking, somebody was saying, would you need a boho, or would you need a water point, or would you need, or what would you need, or is it, would you need a bullfighting ring? Mm -hmm. so, uh, we, or would you need a Formula One ring, in, uh, or Formula One co race course in, uh, in Machakos, or yes. what would you need as your priority as a county government? So I think this is what we need to do, so that people in Mombasa, people in Kualek, people in Kilifi, people everywhere in the country can come and prioritize. That's why the participation of the people is there, to ensure people's participation in governance. Mm -hmm. it's not, we don't want this uh, house of wisdom, where a governor believes he knows it all, and yet you find a myriad of complaints that are generated within the populace. Yeah. So I think this, this bill tries to give a framework upon how all these kinds of things uh, uh, can be realized in terms of people prioritizing what they need in their counties. Uh, all right, let's speak about something that's also be that's, that's been uh, something of a sore spot for Kenya for a long, long time, and this is land. Again, going back to a recent story, there were, there were evictions in your county uh, Absolutely. fairly recently. Yes. Now, with respect to the law that, that that you're proposing and the structure in which uh, discussions around what should happen in a case like that um, can be had. There's also, and, and um, this, this, this I guess is something that we've brought up also, there's also the other side of this argument which is um, where does the greater good of the public um, you know, parry with what's, what's been going on? Because um, evictions um, happen because presumably, people have encroached on land that's supposed to be used by everybody. Where then does, does the argument about the greater good get into this, this you conversation? You see, I, I, I think um, there's no eviction that, that appears to, 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 to mitigate yeah. the kind of suffering. You know, there are UN guidelines on eviction. They must be done with a clear notice. Mm -hmm. Those people who are to be evicted must have been demo they must be dem demonstrably relocated to another, you know, ev uh, area. Yeah. They, they, need they, they need to be done uh, uh, during broad daylight 
under the, under w when the weather conditionalities are not harsh. So the UN guidelines, we have the eviction laws that have just stalled in Parliament. So I think what we do is to we, we are using this opportunity by stalling the legal framework so that then we avert ourselves from the responsibility mm -hmm. to mitigate uh, the, the kinds of, uh, you know, adversity or, or the kind of harsh, uh, you know, situations we put people in. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked the critical question, where were you every time when people were building all this, all this yeah. time long? And then only for you to come and realize 12 years on, 15 years on, that this is actually private land and it needs to be developed. So I think the, the, the uh, fundamental issues that, that need to be, to, be, to be interrogated. And a government that is humane will have a structure or formula in terms of even how it carries out its evictions. Mm -hmm. uh, the notice will be given. They are, there is massive you know, uh, land in this country where people can be relocated and, 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 and given some kind of a capacity to start up. And I, I think there are ways in which the, 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 land, the, the National Land Alliance and other land lobbies have, 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 have made tangible proposals that yeah. have been thrown out of the window in terms of how evictions can be carried out. Uh, we're not saying that uh, we, should, we, should, we should not develop but it, it must be tampered with humanity. It must, mm -hmm. it must go I, with, with, that whole do, with all that notion about preservation of human dignity. Yeah. The, so the indignation of a few cannot be, uh, cannot be justification for, for development. All right. I um, think just to add to that, yeah. um, the, the aspect, a lot of times evictions is looked at from the point of when you're moving people who are leaving um, mm -hmm. sort of like a house, but then the, the aspect of evictions in terms of uh, livelihoods is totally ignored. So when people are um, either uh, pastoralists, uh, fisher folk, so their livelihood, when they are evicted from accessing uh, access to their, their livelihoods, is totally ignored in the conversation. So that is, is left aside, especially when discussing whether it's compensation mm -hmm. or their rights to access their, their, li their livelihoods. All right. Critics would say economic and social rights are expensive. They're extremely expensive. And um, if you listen to the government's argument right now, again, to just to go back to the argument that we don't have any money, economic and social um, rights are things that ought to be um, attained progressively. Now, if we were to, um, to, to, to take up um, Senator Omar's uh, proposal, what do you think the, the opportunity cost would be for the country's economic growth account? I think one of the things that, you know, it, it's the narrative that we have to look at. So mm -hmm. when you're looking at the economic and social rights, you have to first, before you put money on the table, is looking at issues around equality, equity distribution, um, environmental justice, uh, j so and inclusivity. So if you start that conversation from that point of view, I think there is space to then say how progressive, what is progressive, because my progressive and different uh, uh, government progressive may be different. Yeah. I guess that's the, the argument for the teachers is that it's been progressive for how long? Since we were in high school, it's been progressive. And so that argument of progressive means that there's one, there's somebody not, not on the table. So the inclusivity mm -hmm. of the unions or the different, different parties who are having this, who are in this issue needs to be there. So looking, and it's very hard to say it's expensive when mm -hmm. trips you know, if a trip for the president or the deputy president is costing millions of shillings, Hundred if million. we look to that, and then you have all these different costs that we, we're not looking at, yeah. then it's very hard for me, if I was a teacher or any other person, doctors tomorrow will not be able to listen to that argument when you're saying, let's live within our means. Yeah. And if you're saying, let's live within our means that we don't have the budget, then let's really analyze what is living within our means. All right. Yeah. Senator Hassan, uh, tell me, let's drill down now to to something that perhaps uh, people out there can relate to. We just ran a story this evening on uh, the fate of, of a young lady in Kitui who has parts of her, her, her skull stashed in her stomach. Presumably, from what it looks like, would be a case of medical malpractice. Um, there are other cases of the abuse of economic and social rights that we see on a daily basis. The question that a lot of Kenyans ask, though, is who do you turn to? How do, you, how do you enforce rights either for yourself or how do you get institutions to enforce these rights? Um, this is bad, bad, bad uh, behavior as a journalist, but the second question would be, how is your law going to be able to help the people get those kinds of alternatives? In fact, in fact the word we use there is enforcement. Mm -hmm. Because in, the, in Kenya, where, where the devil is, is enforcement and respect for these rights and for promotion of these rights. So I think what we're doing is, first and foremost, we're creating obligations. These obligations, are not CSR project programs. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let no government cheat you. That they, it's about CSR, about how much, uh, um, you know, um, uh, uh, two law is going to invest, reinvest in the community, or titanium, yeah. based titanium who's going to invest in, in Kwale. It's about 
also making maximum benefit in terms of the taxations that they get so that we can then put them into programs that, that then structurally benefit the Kenyan people. So the, the enforcement regime here is, is, is going to court to enforce these rights because there are obligations that arise on government. And government, this progressive is what we are trying to define. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a five-year uh, so socioeconomic uh, plan yeah. and that is what will demonstrate how much investment you're making so even if you go somebody goes to court a government can demonstrate or county government can demonstrate that we're making this type of an investment and that's why we've uh, tried to change the architecture of public finance mm -hmm. so that it then it is this whole issue of economic and social right comes in right at the point of budget policy statement IBEC the inter 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 intergovernmental budget committee that the, yeah. the deputy president chairs so that then they can be able to raise these issues about how what kind of investment needs to be made yeah. and uh, in terms of, therefore, if, if these, the, then we have enforcement agencies, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights and other Article 59 commissions that, that deal with uh, the uh, Chapter 4, which is the, uh, where, uh, where, where Article 43 is, is, is located in. Mm -hmm. So these, these commissions, the courts are an enforcement agency. And, these, and then the Senate and the, National, and the County Assembly, as per this the law, will, will be making binding recommendations on county governments to be integrated in their annual fiscal you know, uh, planning in terms of uh, their annual, uh, you know, um, um, uh, 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 budgets, annual budgets, so that uh, finally when their finance bill becomes law, these, these, it must reflect how it's going to invest in these critical areas. Yeah. And therefore, the, the, the young lady there should have been able to, the governor and uh, head of Kitui, should have been able to say that she has access to, to free and quality medical services mm -hmm. on the basis of that promise of social socioeconomic rights. And this, that's the, therefore, they, she's entitled to those kinds of... Uh, you should not always wait for philanthropy. Yeah, I believe uh, some good, good, good meaning Kenyans might, might intervene, but it should, it should our, our health, our education should not, should not be the work of philanthropy and CSR. Mm -hmm. And these are the capital inv de developments that we need. And once you invest in people, these people become productive. So they grow the economy. You yeah. know, you miss that point. Most of us are not productive in this economy. That's why President Kenyatta was saying 1.5%. But, but, but you, you need to grow the productivity of every Kenyan. You need to grow the productivity of counties. That's why you need to invest more money in counties. It's, it's the same principle in business. So when the productivity means our taxes are going to rise, our counties are going to be producing more. And once that happens, therefore, the economy grows. Uh, there will be more direct uh, for, and foreign, uh, local and foreign investment. And therefore, we are able to, to provide for these rights in a more robust way because the, the monies will be available. All right. Uh, Ikal, uh, let's, let's widen this a little now and talk about corruption and um, how it's uh, the interplay between corruption and uh, the attainment of economic and social rights. In your experience, how, how bad of an effect has corruption of any sort had on the attainment of the rights of the people of, of Turkana County? I think generally one of the things that we, we have to realize is if we don't, whatever, even if we're saying it's we want 15% of the revenues to come, if we cannot use the current amount of money that is there yeah. to make sure that we are looking at, we're not adding um, infrastructure because all the members of the county assembly want infrastructure. We're actually adding infrastructure based on the need of the people to, 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 to this infrastructure. So if, if the little funds that we have are sort of eaten up bit by bit, so even if it's from the top, if it's the county executive, then the next person, the next person, by the time it, the, the project gets to the community, it will be a borehole drilled but never piped. It will be a classroom built, but never staffed. Mm -hmm. It will be a health, uh, health facility built, but then no, no staff or no housing for the staff. So eventually, even if you have the infrastructure in place, then the people do not have access to this, to whether it's education, healthcare, water, uh, housing, whatever um, basic needs. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and that's not only in Turkana, but cut across the country. So we have, if, whether we, we like it or not, corruption is big on the table. Mm -hmm. And until we address it, and it's not only from the ESCC, see addressing it but when we citizens start to say we will not allow for this so we are social auditors within our different wards villages counties then is when we will be able to really start to, to talk about what senator omar is, is saying you yeah. know really being able to value or hold the economic and social rights senator do you think that there needs to be uh, additional legislation specifically to uh, uh, link to be uh, to corruption and the attainment of economic and social rights or yeah. do we have enough you know, in terms of force of law you now we've been we've been remembering more of late mm. this shows you how this as a nation uh, you know we've degenerated in terms of values mm -hmm. uh, uh, if it's rose tinted that we remember 24 years <laughs> later <laughs> to, uh, president Moy said you cannot so solve some of these issues through legislation mm -hmm. you cannot give integrity to one based on uh, legislation if you're a thief you remain a thief 
Unfortunately, when we push you into government, you, you will look for other ways to pilferage the economy. Uh, things might look good on paper, but they don't add up in common sense. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I can tell you for a fact, the, the, the procurement processes for, for the 100,000 shilling Wilborough was probably followed. There were probably three quotations, and that, that was the lowest bidder. But, but, uh, but on common sense, and I can tell you, it, it cuts across. I've seen documents from various counties, including because I've seen your in the public, public accounts. It might all add up on paper. Including your own. Including my own. In fact, that's what, 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 what makes me extremely angry. I mean, I think as politicians, we are paid extremely well. You know, I mean, we, we, I, I look at where I come from personally. I think in life I have made a certain progress. Why should I continue to proliferate an economy of a county or of a nation? just for the comfort of myself and to look like I'm so loaded, throwing a little bits of money in here and there. Mm. Why don't you put in structures to help these people? You say you are wealthy. How come you've never solved the problem of the, of the entire society? Because these, programs, these problems must be sorted out by, 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 by programs. You must ensure that people have access to good quality education. Mm -hmm. You can't go above paying school fees indefinitely. You must ensure, rather than pay, pay for hospital bills, uh, improve the health Yeah, the but health Senator, care if, if the, there is a coalition, be, um, not a coalition or, or, or a, a, a What's the word that I'm looking for here? A, a, a confluence of interests between MCAs, the governor, and perhaps even a National Assembly and the Senate not to um, put, put uh, economic and social rights on the, on the top of the agenda, then how will this ever change? Because you are the vehicles through which that's this why we're trying to get. That's why in Kenya, th things are not binding until they are law. Mm -hmm. That's why, unfortunately, President Moe said, don't, you, don't, you can't legislate on everything. Some of these things is for us Kenyans as we are making our own decisions. Uh, I know John Allen. Put against another candidate, I know who I can choose. These integrity are not things you buy from the, from the, from the shelf of a, of a, of a supermarket. Mm. They, are, they, are, they are these causes that are built over time. You know, our, my worldview is developed over a period of time. You know what I did and said when I used it to be in the university, in the Ken CHR. You know, I, I, so you, 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 if you employ per people on the basis of their CVs, their backgrounds, why would you think this person who presents an extremely vicious uh, you know, a CV on integrity will bring integrity to public service. Yeah. If this person has been alleged for all kinds of crimes that were committed under the moon, why would you think he will not commit these crimes when you, when you make him president? So I think these are some of the things that we, we, we need to internalize as a country as we make uh, the choices of our leaders. And we must desist from these issues about ethnicity, about... I remember when I was going, joining Mombasa politics, I was told there are two elements of Mombasa politics, mm -hmm. thuggery and, uh, and, and, and resources. I used neither, and the people of Mombasa still voted for me. And I think we must now more and more be agenda-based. And uh, once we become agenda-based and, and present our, 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 we plead to the Kenyan public on the basis of the, 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 the quality of our, of our, of our, our soundness of our vision, then this is where we will be taking Kenya forward. But I can tell you for a fact that you cannot, you know, you cannot, you cannot begin for for, for, for one thing and expect mm -hmm. to get another. You, if you buy oranges, you will get oranges. Yeah. If you buy avocado, you will get avocado juice. You cannot buy avocado and expect to squeeze oranges out of it. True. Uh, Ikal, as we wind up now, let's get your final thoughts here with this question. Um, uh, if you take a look at some of the, the, the budget hearings prior to, to the presentation of, of, of the national budget estimates, uh, there are almost empty. Some of, these, some of these holes are almost empty for a majority of that period. And that speaks to a disengagement, maybe an apathy. F I don't know what the reason is, but th there is a level of disengagement between the public and the man on the ground, the woman on the ground, and their responsibility to be able to police government. How do you carry, as a person who's worked with civil society, how do you carry the public along with you to be able to understand the importance um, of economic social rights and other, and other rights to their lives individually? I think one of the things that, we, we, we have seen out there is when you talk about the big figures, when you talk about hundreds of billions of, of shillings, so that person in the village is thinking, that, that's not in my reach. So you have to break it down. And I think one of the, the challenges we've had and what has been ignored for a long time is how to break it down so that that person in the village who is a hudsman but has children in school mm -hmm. can be able to realize that this, this means education for my child. This means healthcare. This means a cattle dip for my animals. This means uh, fodder during, during emergency drought. Yeah. So being able to break that down is of importance, but also sh highlighting to them that the economic development is based on their ability to participate. So it is inclusivity, so that it is not, they don't see it as a big word, an elitist word out there, yeah. but really means to them, meaning that when I go and sit and listen to the budget, even at the local level, mm -hmm. 
it means that I am able to inform, to, uh, to at least fight for that economic and social right. All right. Um, Hassan, as we wind up, what's the process now? How far is this bill from becoming law? And uh, when do we think that uh, we're going to be able to see the bill on uh, preservation of dignity and enforcement of social yeah. economic rights right? uh, becoming part of the national discourse? First and foremost, uh, the new constitution came to change fundamentally yeah. the nature and character of government and the way we do politics. I launched a strategic plan a bit a week ago to just try and change the nature of how we do politics. Because I, I came into the political sphere and I was in a culture shock. For the last one year, one and a half, I've been learning, I've been trying to see. And there are certain th transgressions of, pol of the political class that are unacceptable. And that's why the, some, the people out there give the young people, the people who have never been in politics, this opportunity so that they can change the nature of politics and how we do politics. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing politics does it is to change you. But the challenge we have is to change politics and the nature of how we do politics. So this, this bill also came to change the nature of how government organizes itself by prioritizing economic and social rights. It codified them as part of the obligations county and national governments have. So what we, where we are now is, is uh, to, to, to the constitution that is now this bill tries to, to give some fodder in terms of moving ourselves forward. Yeah. So I, it's now at the, say, at, the, at, uh, at the committee stage. We, we, had, we have the first reading. We, have, we are now in the process of public participation. So we've had several public forums. We had one last week. We are going to have one uh, th this week, th the coming week, with the KNCHR and other fi Article 59 commissions, Gender and Equality Commission, uh, the, CR the CRA, so that they can advise on part of the formula we are suggesting in terms of the division of um, uh, the Equalization Fund. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that if we're able to run these spaces, we, the committee, that's the Legal and Human Rights Committee, which I'm the, the convener of the subcommittee on human rights should be able, through Senator Wako, who's the chair, present a report of the committee maybe in the next month or in the next uh, two weeks uh, or in a month. And then after that, so then uh, the bill now, there will be so the second reading where we'll all be able to, to, to participate. Then we'll go to committee stage. So I see ourselves uh, in act, uh, as, at least as Senate passing this, this bill yeah. at least by the time we, we, in December, but when we go for, by the time before we raise for, for, the, for the December recess. And then it will now go to the National Assembly for concurrence. Okay. I hope they, they will not mutilate it uh, fun fundamentally. Or politicize it for that To matter. alter the character of the bill and the, the objective that it is. All right. Sen bodies. Senator Hassan Omar from uh, Mumbai. County, thank you very much for joining us as well as you, Ikal Angele, environmentalist and Goldman Prize winner 2012. Before I wind up, I just want to get uh, uh, people's understanding of what exactly it is we're talking about. We just have a few slides um, that I want us to run on our Super Bowl fairly quickly as we wind up this discussion on the kind of rights, the specific rights under Article 43 that we're talking about. Um, if if my, my director can do that fairly quickly, I know. There we go. So the highest attainable standard of health which includes the right health care services there are quite a number of them and we'll just keep them rolling hopefully also as uh, Yvonne Okwara does um, her, her wind up this evening um, that's just one of them there are quite a number of them if you want to look at um, what specific rights uh, we're talking about go to article 19 in our constitution as well as article 43 another right there is accessible and adequate housing um, freedom from hunger um, those are the kinds of social economic rights that we're talking about and those are the rights that affect everybody on at every level and and this this is something that i think includes every kenyan of all walks of life so it's an important discussion one that Yvonne Okwara has been following uh, this evening um, and now brings us a summation of what we've been talking about on what's a point Yvonne All right, I'm told that we're going to take a break um, right now and then we'll come back. Yvonne has more stories, um, including that summation, hopefully, uh, on KTN Weekend Prime. Thank you very much for joining us. Of course, the hashtag is the other Kenya. Keep your feedback coming in. We're going to sample some of that later on. Thank you once again to my guests. Back after a moment. <laughs>